got painful knees? Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Oser. I've got a solution for you if you work with clients that have painful knees. Many of our older clients present with pain in their knees when they're walking, when they're doing stairs, when they're squatting down to the floor and getting back up. So in today's edition of Integrative Movement Insider Live here, we're gonna share with you some strategies. I'm gonna share with, with you some strategies. Thank you for joining me today on a Monday morning for addressing the, one of the most common and underappreciated causes of knee pain. And that's rotation uncontrolled. Hello, Mary Trill, how are you? Good morning. I know I didn't tell you when Facebook Live was going to be, but <laughs> I'm on Facebook Live right now, Mary Trilla. Good to see you. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope all of you had a great weekend. So one of the most common underappreciated causes of knee problems is when the knee, the femur, and the tibia specifically are not well aligned. And actually, when there's rotation in the knee caused by tightness of the hamstrings. Now, we think about tightness in the hamstrings and how it relates to things like low back issues as well as knee issues. However, we don't often attribute hamstrings to rotation issues and why this is actually the most common cause of knee valgus. It's not just because your clients have weak abductors, and in fact, that's actually not really a cause of your client's knee valgus. Even though it can relate to knee valgus, it's not the cause. It's the lateral hamstrings. So if you think about the femur, the femur and the tibia, so imagine this is your left femur, here's your left tibia, the femur and tibia should sit on top of each other. Obviously, there's a meniscus and the cartilage in between the two bones here. So they should rotate on each other. So the tibia and femur should rotate internally and externally upon each other. Few degrees, but very important, these few degrees of rotation, they can also move into adduction and abduction. So adduction, abduction, those are just normal mechanics that happen during walking, standing, and running activities like that as well as squatting and lunging and things like that. Now, what the hamstrings do, we can think of the hamstrings sort of like two reins on a horse. So just imagine you're riding a horse. I've never ridden, well, I guess I've ridden a horse once in a while, but don't really know how to ride a horse. Just imagine, you know, you've seen a rider on a horse <laughs> and you see like when they pull the rein on one side, it turns the horse's head to that same side. So you pull the right side of the rein and it turns the horse's head to the right. You pull the left side, it pulls the horse's head to the left. Well, if you think about the hamstrings, the hamstrings are inserting on either side of the tibia. So your biceps femoris, I should say, biceps femoris is coming to insert into the fibular head. So the long head of the biceps comes and inserts, I should say both, side, both the short and long heads insert into the head of the fibula. Well, the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, the ones on the inside of your knee, come and insert onto the tibia. Well, these two muscle groups, the biceps femoris, as well as the semitendinosus and membranosus, they have this check rein sort of control of the tibia underneath the femur. So the semitendinosus and membranosus will turn the tibia in, internally rotated, the bus femoris will externally rotate that tibia. So, what we start to see in a lot of our older clients, and it's just more obvious, our younger clients have it too, many of our younger clients that have knee problems, many of our older clients, it's just more obvious to see it. What you tend to see is you'll start to see your older clients with their tibia externally rotated, their femurs relatively internally rotated. Well, that position, external tibial rotation and femur internal rotation is oftentimes what contributes to that valgus knee position. It's a rotation issue, not simply a weakness issue up here in the glutes. Because what will happen is when our clients lose rotation, we've been talking about rotation in the last few episodes of Integrative Movement Insider and how when your clients lose rotation, when they're walking, obviously they don't rotate this much, <laughs> or bring their arm up like this, but when they're losing rotation, when they're walking, they start moving in the frontal plane. Well, you will start to lose your balance if you move through the frontal plane and you don't do something to compensate. A common compensation is to externally rotate those tibia so the rotation is not coming from their femurs usually. They're not rotating from the femurs because they don't have enough external femoral rotation usually. So they start to externally rotate from the tibia. The tibias externally rotate, so their femurs are still relatively internally rotated. So that's why so many of your older clients, they have this sort of this foot duck walk. They sort of walk like this because that 
tibia externally rotating will kickstand their tibia out and their feet out so now they're more stable when they start walking through the frontal plane or moving through the frontal plane. Well, that drives knee problems, and then we get taught to, hey, strengthen these glutes, strengthen your hip abductors, the glute medius, push those knees out. But what happens is, if the, if this is the tibia again, the tibia is externally rotated, the femur is internally rotated, if you keep externally rotating, if you try to externally rotate the femur, it just keeps relatively rotating the tibia with it. It doesn't change this rotation. The relationship between the femur and the tibia. A little complicated, but hopefully that makes sense. We need to change the rotation between the femur and tibia so the femur and tibia align more optimally. So here's a quick, easy strategy. What's crazy about this strategy is this is the exact same strategy we use with our clients, our patients in our office, and it's amazing how effectively it works. Now, it will not take away degenerative changes of the knee, osteoarthritic changes, the cool thing, however, it will change the alignment and therefore help the client work towards changing the control, which then reduces a lot of wear and tear upon the knee. Super cool. Now, my good friend Lorette Roga created a super cool Roga, roll, excuse me, super cool roller named the Rolga, hence the name of the company as well. My buddy Rusty over there at Rolga. It's the first person that turned me on to this. What's really cool about this, there's a couple things you can do, there's many things you can do really cool on, on the Rolga or with the Rolga. This is one of the coolest things you can do. And I make no money by telling you this. Yes, we sell them in our office. We sell them in our office because we believe in them and they work so well. I make no money by telling you about the roll. You can go to their website and purchase it directly from them. I, you know, I, I'm, I don't, so I'm not selling this to you. I'm just telling you that I believe in this roller because of how effective it is. What's super cool about this is you can put your leg or you will put your client's leg in this roll right here. You're going to lean onto the outside of the leg and then do a, a couple contract relaxes. The cool thing is you're able to put the pressure into this zone here. So you get zone one here, zone two, zone, zone three is this groove right here. Zone four is out here. I'm gonna lean my weight into zone four and then do some contract relaxes to create some myofascial lengthening in the hamstrings, okay? Now, why would I be doing this on one side versus the other? Because I've evaluated my, assessed my client to know or see that they've had external rotation of the tibia, lacking internal rotation of the tibia, and they don't have good alignment. And generally you'll also see in single leg stance, you'll see that they struggle, you'll see a lot of rotation of that knee when they stand in single leg stance, they will oftentimes, their foot will be turned out as well. So that's why we would be doing this. So here's how it looks. If you can sit on the floor, I'll use the table just for purposes here. I'm going to put the roller in, put my leg in the groove, and then lean to this side. And now I'm going to use the edge of the table here. I'm going to push my heel or do a hamstring contraction. Hold that for five, four, three, two, one, and then lengthen. And at the same time I'm lengthening, I'm turning the tibia internally. Just a little bit. I don't need to do, move the whole leg because that's, that's femur femoral internal rotation. I'm focusing on keeping my femur stationary and just slightly internally rotating that tibia. I'm gonna hold that for a count of 15 seconds or for about two to three breaths. So again, contract, hold for five, four, three, two, and one, and then lengthen slightly, just focusing on the external rotation component of the tibia, not excessively rotating, holding that for two to three breaths, actively also dorsiflexing at the same time. Okay, so I'm focusing on or visualizing sending the heel long and pulling the toes up towards me. I'll do that one more time. So push down for a count of five, four, three, two, one, and then slowly lengthen the hamstring and also visualize turning the femur internally, sending the heel that direction, dorsiflexing the ankle, so I'm also getting length through the gastroc because that's also part of what's going on here as well. And then holding that for two to three breaths or for about 15 to 20 seconds. So that's the myofascial release component of it. Now we can actually do one of our favorite patterns is a split stance hip hinge. Because again, now I can focus on controlling and lengthening that lateral hamstring a bit more. I'm gonna 
do it from the side first, and then I'll turn around so you can see the important component here. So first thing, we always align head and neck and thoracic pelvic cylinder, hands go upon the pelvis. Hinge first, so that way you know the pelvis is square, step back with the side I'm not working. So I'm working the left side, so that side is forward. Square up that pelvis, and now it's a hinge so that your client feels it in the glute and or hamstring. Right there, you should not feel it in the back. If you're watching your client from the side, you should not see my right butt cheek because I'm rotating my pelvis towards my forward leg, so you should only see my left side when you're viewing me from the side. So from behind, cool thing about these shorts, Lululemons, like my Lululemon shorts. Again, make no money by telling you that. I just like Lululemon shorts. The cool thing about these shorts is they have a nice line on the short, so you can see that when I align and hinge, that line stays square. I step back, that line is still square. When I hinge, it's still square. You should not see your client's pelvis move like that. That's not controlling rotation of the pelvis and hip complex. So you want to make sure that your pelvis, the pelvis stays level, and I can feel it here in the glute and here in the hamstrings, and then come back up, hinge, come back up, making sure you stay square to that forward leg the entire time. That combination, the mild fascia release, and that split stance hip hinge with that focus on maintaining the cylinder, that pelvis square to that forward leg, is one of the most effective strategies and hidden strategies for addressing chronic knee issues, especially as it relates to the rotation of the femur and tibia, as it relates to that knee abduction or that knee valgus type of position that's driven from that imbalance of the hamstrings that are, that's driving the knee more into that valgus or abducted position. This is Dr. Evan Osar. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it explained how or why so many of your clients have knee issues, and how to use a simple myofascial release technique as well as a corrective exercise to help improve the alignment and control, more importantly, not just the alignment, but the control between the tibia and femur to improve how your clients align. And also, ah, my balance is so much better right now, just from doing that, those few little repetitions, by aligning and controlling femur and tibia as well as aligning that thoracopelvic cylinder over top the lower extremity. And that's how you can be so effective at helping your current clients and even attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. If you're looking for more information, I put the link to two Anatomy Geeks. We did an entire series, we being Jill and I, did an entire series on the functional anatomy of the knee how to address specific muscles like the popliteus. A popliteus is a muscle that runs behind the knee, another important muscle as it relates to rotation. We address this different muscles around the knee, the quads, the hamstrings, the, the gastroc and soleus, and how that relates to the knee issues as well. And then also not just teaching you anatomy, but how to apply your anatomy knowledge to your clients. So that way you can use this information right away. Again, it's about four to six hours of content, probably closer, a little bit closer to six hours and four hours. It's broken down in over three modules where we cover the anatomy. Jill does an amazing job of bringing anatomy to life through creative visuals and showing you, and more importantly, allowing you to experience it in your own body. And then we take you through the assessments and the corrective exercises, similar to what we did here, so that way you can apply your knowledge. And what's cool about this is we have clients or people that are part of two Anatomy Geeks community telling us, Dr. Roser, Jill, we just, I just used, I watched your webinar, I went and used it with a client, and their knee feels better right away. Because we wanted you to be able to not only have the information, we most importantly want you to be able to apply this to your clients. So check out Two Anatomy Geeks, the knee series. If you have any questions, reach out to helpdesk at fitnesseducationseminars.com. Mary will put that link in the, the email in the chat box here as well. So you can reach out to us with any questions you have. Check out Two Anatomy Geeks, the knee series. And we look forward to seeing you as part of our community. It's a wonderful community. It's a great way to learn, earn CECs, and more importantly, learn information that applies to the clients that you work with most. Make it a great Monday. Make it a great week. Get out there. Use your platform for good to bring people together, to empower people, to educate your clients, and make this world a better place. This is Dr. Osar. Make it a great day.